In Unit 4, Lesson 1, for the Ready part of the Ready, Set, Go practice, we are graphing equations. So we're going to graph the following equations on the coordinate grid. And then we're going to determine if the given point is a solution to the equation or not. And so in my classes, we kind of went over two different ways that you could do this. So in number one, I noticed that this equation is in slope-intercept form. So I might recognize this as a linear equation where my y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 2, and my slope is 5. So the first thing I need to do that I did before making the video is just pick an x and a y-axis, make a nice line um, through that axis, and I probably want to make sure that I choose um, a location of my axis where the point 1, comma, 3 will be a point that I could graph. So um, I'm going to graph the equation, well, the line <laughs> from the equation first. So if you wish, you could plug in values of x, evaluate the expression on the right-hand side, and find your values of y. Uh, we've done that before, but that's quite tedious. I'm going to use the y-intercept and the slope. So on my y-axis, I'm going to go down to negative 2. I'm going to put my y-intercept right there. And then my slope is 5, and I could think of that as rising 5, running 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces up, and 1 to the right. Um, you could just get two points and use a ruler. I think it helps our graph be precise if we get a few good points. I could also run, um, I could also rise down 5, so down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go backwards 1. So remember, if my slope is positive, my line should be increasing, which it is. All right, so it's hard to do this digital ruler. Um, we do want to go ahead and connect these points. We were not given any indication, oh my goodness, that we're working with a discrete function. So we should probably assume that it is continuous. All right, and that is our equation for y equals 5x minus 2. All right, the second part, we're asked to determine if this point, 1 comma 3, is a solution to this equation. So remember, that's an ordered pair, an x and then a y. If I go out 1 on my x-axis and up 1, 2, 3 on my y-axis, and I plot that point, I can see that, yes, it lies on the line. Therefore, it is a solution. What that also means is that if I plug in 3 for y and 1 for x into my equation, I get a true statement since 5 minus 2 is, oops, <laughs> is in fact 3. All right, I'm going to do these next ones a little bit faster. So in number 3, we've got a y-intercept of 0, 4 and a slope of negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my y-intercept. If my slope is negative 1, that means I'm going down 1 to the right one, or I could go up 1 backwards to the left one. Oops. And when I graph that line, again, probably want to use a ruler tool for that. Oh, it's off just a little bit. Well. I'm not going to redo it. It's hard to use that digital ruler. And then the question is, is the point 2 comma 2, is that a solution? And it does appear to be because, again, that point lies on that line. Again, the way we could check is in my equation, substitute 2 for y and 2 for x. And it turns out that I get 2 equals 2, which is correct. All right, lastly, number five. Um, again, we've got a y-intercept of negative seven, a slope of five halves. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my y-intercept, negative seven. Um, and I'm gonna rise up one, two, three, four, five, and run over two.
You could also um, go down and backwards, like down five and to the left two, but I didn't leave myself enough space to do that on this graph. All right, I'm gonna try my best to use a ruler tool. If you don't have a ruler at home, you could always use like a straight edge. Your student ID makes a pretty nice straight edge. And then the question is, is the point two comma negative two like a solution? Wow, they all have been so far. So if I go over to two negative two, because remember that's an X and a Y, and I plot that point, again, our answer here is yes, because that point lies on the line. And lastly, we said the way we could check that is plug in your x and y values to your actual equation. So negative two should equal five halves times two minus seven. And it does because negative two is five minus seven, which is negative two. All right, that's all for the ready section.